the, the drill is we teach, uh, we start 15 over hour, then we teach for 45 minutes, and there's a break in 15. So we, that's kind of the system we, we try to adopt. To. So today we are now rapidly approaching the volleyball match, I think. So we have to finish by uh, 15.30. That should be straightforward, I think, because it's a limited amount of uh, math primer stuff left. Maybe I should stand here to show my beautiful face on the screen. Yeah. Uh, that's a bit tricky because I need to hit some buttons here. Okay. Um, when we do economic theory, one problem is always of interest, okay, and that is to optimize. We want to maximize profits, we want to minimize costs, we want to maximize utility or revenue or whatever. Okay, So there's a lot of situations where we want to find out, uh, given a set of decisions, how is the combination of these decisions that produces something that is what we like most. Okay, that is kind of a basic problem emerging from these greed assumption. Okay, if you're greedy, you want to have most of something, okay? That's the point of being greedy, isn't it? So obviously we end up with optimization problems. Optimization is kind of a sub part of math and uh, a few words words on that here. Uh, in many cases we need to perform or to be able to produce derivatives. Okay? Now it starts getting uh, uh, a little bit, not much, okay? Uh, what's up here is the classical mathematical definition of a derivative of a function, okay? You see, this is something you may have known, uh, seen before, it's a, a limit. And the idea here is that when we write L, I, M, and this sign here, the idea is that this something should approach something, in this case zero. Uh, now let's look at what we do here. We have a function here, f of a certain argument plus this delta x, and then we subtract, subtract the f of x, and we divide this by delta x. Let's try to look at this geometrically and see what it means, okay? We have this function, f of x, that is this line, okay? And when we enter x into this function, of course, what we do then is that we pick an x, and then we get a value on this, this axis. So this distance is f of x. Okay? What we do here is that by the starting point x, we add something which we call delta x here. And then we move some distance in this direction, given that this delta x is positive, which, which we by assumption assume here. So this point is x plus delta x. Of course, we can take an input to our function by this term as well. That's what we do here, isn't it? f of x plus delta x. Then we go up to the function again, up here implicitly, and this distance is then f of x plus delta x. Okay? This distance is f of x. This distance is f of x plus delta x. On the top of a fraction here, we subtract f of x from this expression. That means that we take this distance subtract this distance and end up with that distance, okay? So the distance here is f of x plus delta x minus f of x. That's this distance. That is the top of a fraction. And then what we finally do in the fraction is to divide this distance on this distance, isn't it? That's what this fraction tells us. So we take this distance divided by that distance. That is what we actually perform in this fraction here. The idea here, why we do this, is that we're interested in measuring the development of a function, how it kind of changes its curvature, so to say. Okay? So if there is some function here, something like this, what we actually do here is that we make these ones, don't we? All the way around it. And we take these divided by this to produce 
if delta x go to zero, the tangent here. So at each point of the function, we calculate this, this tangent to the function. And that will, of course, produce a new function, which we refer to as the derivative function, the differentiated function. And that is what we do when we calculate derivatives. We calculate this tangent for all points in the function. And we maintain it by doing a straightforward logic. By measuring, should we say, the structure of the function if you condense it at each point here. We could have done it differently, couldn't we? We could have taken that one and divided by this one instead. It would produce the same kind of answer, but of course the formulas for the derivatives would change, wouldn't they? But it could as well have been used that way. But uh, for one reason or the other, they have chosen to do it like this by taking this part of the triangle and divide by this part of the triangle. This is called the hypotenuse, isn't it? This is uh, cathets. Given this def definition, then we can calculate derivatives of different functions. We can actually produce formulas for different derivatives. And the reason why we're interested in these derivatives is very simple. That if you look at this tangent, you will see that at the top point, this tangent is horizontal. It will also be horizontal on this point. And the tangent being horizontal is the same as the derivative equals to 0. So given that we're interested in finding such points like this, the derivative is very handy. It makes it possible for us to identify these points. And typically, these points are points that are relevant when we do maximization or minimization, isn't it? Because if this is our function, and we want to maximize it, this point is actually the maximal point here, in this case. Not necessarily here. It could be up here, couldn't it? We don't know. So in this case, it's a bit more tricky. But here, if everything goes like this, then this point is the maximal point of this function. And it coincides with the derivative equals to 0. And you see here, now we can use this definition. For instance, if you want to find the derivative of x squared, then we just enter it into it, don't we? Then we get x plus delta x squared minus x squared divided by delta x. Then we do some algebra here. You see that we get x squared from this. We can get rid of that one. And then we get 2 times delta x here, 1 time delta x there, 1 time under the denominator. We can reduce it. And it, we end up with a result like this, 2x plus delta x. Then we take the limit. We move delta x to 0. That one vanishes. And we end with 2x, which actually is the derivative of x squared, isn't it? So if you don't remember derivative formulas, you can always find them yourselves just by using the definition. In many cases, of course, it's slightly harder than in this simple example. But at least now you know, if you didn't already, how we are able to arrive at all these formulas for the derivative of functions. Straightforwardly, like this. Now, given this, we can construct a lot of rules. We'll probably see this at some point, hopefully. If you add two functions, you can take derivatives of each of the functions and add together, like in the first case here. If you multiply two functions, like in the second case here, u times v, you just take, take the derivative of u, multiply by v, and add u times the derivative of v. If it's a fraction, the formula looks like this. That's actually straightforward to show without using the definition, because you remember perhaps that 1 over v could be written as v to the power of minus 1. So we can use the same technique, technique as we did previously, can't we? Let's see if it works. It should, shouldn't it? u divided by v is the same as u times v to the power of minus 1. And then we can use the top, or actually the second top formula, to find the derivative. Because when we have a product of two functions, we should take the derivative of the first one, multiply by the second one, 
and then ah, ah let's drop it we need <laughs> we need another formula okay sorry It's straightforward to show it by do using the technique, but we have to know these formula first, okay? How to take the derivative of a polynomial. And you see, to do that, we take, here is a kind of a c1 times x plus c1, c2 times x squared, and so on, okay? And that's easily found by taking the exponent, multiplying, and changing the remaining uh, exponent by subtracting 1. The derivative of the exp exponential is the same as itself. That's the only function which has that stability, meaning that the curvature of ex an exponential is very strong. Okay, the, the kind of this the derivative measures the how steep the function is, so to speak. So this is an extremely steep one because it retains itself. Logarithmic is one over x. The square root is one over two times the square root of x. So this is kind of the basic formulas we need to keep track of in a course in microeconomics. In some cases, functions have mon more than one variable. Okay? Basically, we've talked about functions which has a single variable. We can very well think of functions with more than one variable. Okay? In economic theory, that's more like the normal case. Uh, Uh, for instance, if you look at a consumer who wants to buy stuff, then his buying decision will typically depend on how much he buys of so one good and another good and a third good and so on. So, so his uh, satisfaction, so to speak, or his utility function, as we call it in economics, depends on different values of different objects. Okay? We are humans. We buy m cell phones. We buy computers. We buy TVs. We buy everything. Okay? And uh, our decision on what to buy and when of course, will then depend on, on the values of all these goods. So that produces multivariable functions, like in this case, the function f, which is a function of several variables. In that case, we can perform uh, the process of taking derivatives, but in that case, we call it partial derivatives. So a partial derivative is a derivative with respect to a certain variable, keeping all the other variables constant. So if we put f and let's say 2 in for here, the partial derivative of f with respect to x2, we take the derivative with respect to the form of x2, given x1 and all other x is constant. In some cases, we may need to look at that. Okay? It's really straightforward. You just do the same as you do in a single variable case, but you, you then point your derivative to one of the variables and you keep all other variables constant the same kind of operation, but you just really need, need how to do it. It says here can be defined as the derivative with respect to x, y. Actually, there's a, 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 a typo, isn't it? It should be an i here. You see that? To make it correct. Sorry, there's an i missing here. Can be defined as the derivative with respect to x, i, given all other variables x1 up to x i minus 1, skip the one we're taking the derivative to, and then move on x i plus 1 up to x n, hold constant. So a partial derivative is just a single variable derivative where we point at the variable at interest, take the derivative with respect to that, and keep all other variables constant. Okay, optimization. It says here that it's extremely important in microeconomics as we're interested in maximizing positive or minimizing negative economic outcomes. The set of stas stationary points are obtainable by solving the equation f prime or the derivative of x equals to zero, as we already discussed. In, many, in the many dimensional case, we have to take par partial derivatives and equate them to zero. That produces all these points, okay? And these points are candidates, normally, for our optimal value. So this is a stationary point, this is a stationary point, this one, this one, this one. All of these points have a derivative equal to zero. If we want to maximize this function, this is the solution, isn't it? Not this, not this. These are local maxima. If you want to minimize, this is the solution, not this. This is a local minimum. This is a global minimum, or is it? No, it's not. 
because the function seems to move on down, down here and there are points here which are below this one so this is also a local minima so the actual global minimum here is perhaps some, somewhere down there or somewhere down there depending on whether we constrain our problem as we says it says here in the second one that optimization is far more involved than this constraints, binary or stochastic variables and so on and so forth but applying derivatives will in most cases prove sufficient in microeconomics. Okay, so we don't need to deal with these complicating factors of having things that make things more tricky. It's kind of obvious, isn't it? If we have a function like this and we want to find and it goes like this, okay? The maximal point is here on the function. But if this is not an allowed point, if it be, we must be on the left of this line, for instance, obviously this is the solution. You agree? So you see that constraints here, something which constrains what we can do, affects the decision on what the optimal value is. And of course, if this is in many dimensions and there are many variables, it becomes kind of tricky. Well, actually, it becomes immensely difficult in certain cases. So this was a quick run through on necessities in mathematics. The last parts are the more complex parts. Unfortunately, they are perhaps the most important ones as well, but uh, that's just how it is. Okay, but as I, as I told you, uh, we will try to do this intuitively. Okay, and try not to spend ma necessary time on mathematics unless it's really necessary. So in most cases, we don't deal with this. Some cases, <coughs> maybe, okay, if necessary. But you saw uh, the, the grades from two years ago. They didn't look that bad, did they? Let's hope you do it even better. Okay. This is a broad uh, connection of very bright young people. Don't we have that here? Yeah, it seems so to me. Okay. Now it's time for volleyball. In two minutes, Birnir will arrive in this door. We just wait for him. Okay. Don't go now unless you don't want to play volleyball. It's very important that event management beat sports management here. You see that? Uh, you see that one? Yeah. Okay. Then we meet tomorrow at 9:15. Here, don't we? Wasn't that correct? Talk for the dog. That's Norwegian. Means uh, thanks for the day. <laughs>